a project number three. Uh, we're trimming, we've cast it, we've blocked it out, we've casted it, we've sandblasted it, and I want to go over some of the basic steps again uh, so we don't go out of order. You can see the food line here, or the bead line is very uh, perfectly uh, replicated here. So I'm going to start off with the cutoff disc, maybe a little loud with the suction. And I'm going to go and uh, cut the sprues off first. Please try not to cut your finger. Don't bend, otherwise the disc will break. So gently, straight ahead, and there's one. A little cold water beside you would help. Just outside the food line. Number two. And again, number three we might do from both directions. We start from this way. Be careful not to cut any clasps off. The other side of the disc cuts as well, not just the front side that you're looking at. And then we have a sprue. If it's a substantial sprue, we'll keep it for uh, some uh, strengthener projects that we have coming up. If not, just put it aside. Leave it up at the front. And now from the thick disc, a thin disc, excuse me, I'll go to a thicker one. And then here I'll do the rough trimming. I don't need a handpiece for this. This is what the high speed is for. It's very good for taking the excess flash away from the finishing line. Go right up to the line, taper it. Make some more room here. It's been a lot of work so far to this point, so don't rush. Any leftover flash that you can see under your clasp, you can take off with a thick disc. Be very careful. You know, the disc will keep cutting, so keep it moving. Don't slice through. Now, the more you can do with the disc, the faster the trimming will go. So I've done the anterior food line. I did a bit of one class. And now I'll do the posterior bead line here with the major connector. It's a little thicker where the screws were attached. is stippled, but to become tapered, I normally have a smooth line at the post dam or posterior part of the framework, the, in, the external finishing line, the anterior part, and this finishing line here. But before I get to that, let me take some flash off my rest. With a good wax up, the trimming is, you know, 15 minutes. You don't need to be sitting with the high speed all day long just to take off the, the bulk, the screw more mainly, and any uh, bubbles or flash that we may have encountered from our investing. And now this clasp here, if you wax up right to the margin of these rests with a magnifying glass, or a, excuse me, magnification, then you should have no problem. Not only the length of the guide planes, the width of the guide planes, you can see my shoe extensions are really clearly marked out here.
top, the uniform shape. I think that's it for the disc. Oops. Next I'll go to a large barrel stone of some kind. I think I have a brown one here somewhere. I'll start with the major connector since it's a fresh stone. And I'm going to taper the finishing line or the bead line down to the tissue so this is a lot thinner. You can see the strengthening part in the center. And I'm going to make this polished uh, line about the same width, roughly, kind of blending into the uh, stipple pattern. Let me check here that I'm not overextended in one little spot. There I am right there. And then on the external finishing line, I'll make this smooth as well. Now, depending how I wax my finishing line, it might be smooth already if I did it after the stipple pattern or before the stipple pattern. But I want to transition between the smooth acrylic, the smooth metal, to a stippled, highly polished palette. Don't reduce the height of the finishing line. I still need some thickness there for the acrylic. A little closer, maybe. Don't, don't get that down now and, and, and uh, reduce the height of the external finishing line. Then I'll do the anterior section. Another external finishing line, a smooth junction between the uh, stippled. This will be highly polished as well. And then now, once I'm satisfied with that rough trimming, again, rough trimming, I'm going to trim my clasp from the occlusion down. The top of the clasp from the occlusion down. The rest, concave. The shoulders, the rest, the shoulder. This is a really critical area of a uh, acre slash. The rest, the shoulder, the shoulder gives it this kind of uh, shape otherwise. Uh, afterwards, excuse me. Again, I haven't rushed to the model. I have no idea if it fits in the model. I know it will because it came off there and I blocked it out. But there's no rush now. I'm just doing some rough trimming, some shaping, and then as you have experience, framework after framework, you'll know uh, in advance where you need to reduce some before we're going to the model. And I'll get on to the other white dusted class. Remember, three planes, the occlusion rest, the shoulder, the shoulder, the occlusion surface of the class, trim the occlusion first, then the buckle or labial, and then underneath to reduce the bounce or increase the bounce of the class, especially in the undercut area. So we don't, if you just keep going from the outside like this, you'll just thin it out. Because I think you've experienced that already. Concave, spoon-like rest. Again, this is rough polishing, uh, rough trimming. I'm going to sandblast once again. I'm going to sandblast once again, and then deplate or pre-polish or electroplate. Excuse me, electro polish. Uh, stripping some chrome off. Whatever I can do here saves my handpiece. Plus, I got two hands on the project here. Uh, maybe a little bit on the guide surface on the proximal plane, uh, proximal guide plane. Underneath, you see any bubbles, overhangs? Take them off.
I want this glass to look machine-like. Again, we've got now a G-class, so a concave shoulders on the inside here, and then the same uh, width profile for the reciprocal arm. Try to maintain the integrity of the reciprocal arm the same thickness. Now keep in mind with experience, you know that if you're taking too much, you've still got polishing and electroplating. If you have any small bubbles here on the palette, you can give it a slight dusting with a stone. Slight, slight, slight. A little dusting. A little bit just to make sure. Redu reduce. This triple pattern, maybe a little bit more here on the roller class. I got some flash here on the top of this class. And the nick guide plane of the molar I didn't do. Guide plane, taper. Got a little bit of uh, porosity just there where my thumb is. Ooh, it's a little hot. Let's see if I can trim that out. Got a little suck back there. That looks good. There we go. So basically a picture frame of a smooth area, external finishing line, posterior bead line, external finishing line, anterior bead line, that's kind of somewhat equal distant. Any bubbles on the bottom, a slight dusting of the stone, a slight, just touch it. Please don't take too much here, you're gonna lift it off the palette. Just a slight dusting, make sure there's no kind of nodules. Guide surface again. I'm gonna save some for the fitting of my hand piece. Occlusion surface, labial, any mesh that's too far out. A little thick here. I'm going to reduce this down. Okay, and then we're going to fit it and then polish it after we sandblast now. Deplate, fit, and then polish. Maintain the integrity of the framework. I've got a little crack here. I'm just taking it out. I'll fake that a little bit. It's okay. Guide surfaces. All of them are rough trimmed. Maybe a little bit more on this bicuspid. On the G-class. And then we're going to polish this case after we deplate it. Okay? Thank you.